This morning on Daybreak, we recap a meeting held by the city of Springfield to get input on development in one of its fastest growing areas. And we're now learning what will go in place of the building that used to house the Ride the Ducks attraction in Branson. Plus, a friendly competition between 12 Springfield middle schools proves that kids still do love to read. We'll have that story and much more coming up for you this morning here on Daybreak. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. It's Friday, March 22nd. I'm Lauren Barnes. I'm Joe Morano. I like the sound of March 22nd and first full Friday of spring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We've yeah. had the warmer weather. It's been so nice. Around here, our photographer Gerald has kind of coined this term Good Friday, uh, <laughs> right. which is what it means. Uh, it has multiple meanings, but that means it's payday. So, yeah. yeah. And it's a Good Friday here at Color 10. Yeah. So that's all right. <laughs> uh, we're, we're really looking at this weather because we were promised by Elisa nice days coming up for, for this Friday. Beth Finello in for Elisa this morning. Do we still have that to look forward to? Today? Yes, we are going to have great <laughs> temperatures in the 60s today and so much sunshine. It's going to be absolutely She's beautiful. got the energy. She's bringing the best. excitement. I like that. It's, but it's Friday. Good. It's, worth, <laughs> it's Friday and it's worth it because of the weather. It's going to be great. Exactly, right? exactly. So let's look at our satellite and radar right now. We've got quiet conditions. We've got clouds just to our west ahead of our next system. That will come in starting through the overnight temperature or through the overnight time tomorrow. Right now, temperatures in Springfield sitting at 33 degrees. It is Pretty chilly, so you want to grab an extra jacket as you're heading out the door this morning, but you won't need it by this afternoon. 36 degrees in Branson, 34 in West Plains, and 39 up in Rolla. Over the next several hours, temperatures are going to soar up into the lower and middle 50s by this afternoon, so you're definitely not going to need your jacket by then. We have a warmer and sunny day today. We've got storm chances in the seven day with a potential for some severe weather through Saturday and into Sunday with a cooler start to your seven day next week and then some warmer temperatures by the middle of next week. We'll do that in just a few minutes. Starting with a follow-up this morning, residents gathered to talk about developments in one of Springfield's fastest growing areas, the Galloway Township. Now this happened yesterday. Last fall, the city put a 270-day delay on further zoning for Galloway while residents clashed with developers over how things should be done. During this delay, the city will act as a mediator between the two sides, and last night was the first of two meetings. Wendy Hoosier says the thing that makes Galloway great is slipping away, while the developer says they intend on keeping it intact. We've had complaints about things and how it's too congested, it's just claustrophobic. The airy, um, relaxed feel of Galloway was going away. We're down there for all the same reasons people love that area and um, we want to do our best to uh, highlight those and uh, make sure that they're taken care of. The city will hold another one of these open house meetings in May and then release draft recommendations in June. You can take a survey online at the city's website. And following up on another story now, the family of a man connected in the case of the three missing women in Springfield is speaking out about the recent arrest of Bart Streeter. The 54-year-old was arrested in late February for allegedly trying to abduct a 15-year-old girl at a nail salon in Tennessee. Well, Streeter is the son of Cheryl Levitt and the brother of Susie Streeter. Levitt, Streeter, and Stacy McCall went missing back on June 7, 1992. Bart Streeter's family issued a statement saying, in part, that Streeter has a long history with alcohol abuse. They say the video of the incident in Tennessee shows Streeter did not try to remove anyone forcibly from the establishment. The Streeters say the charges are exaggerated and they believe the story was corrupted when relayed to the media. In news around the Ozarks, Ride the Ducks will not operate again in Branson after the tragedy there last summer. Ripley's Entertainment has announced new plans for that property. It'll be replaced with what the company is calling Branson Top Ops. It's described as a patriotic themed experience with an interactive outdoor maze, indoor laser tag, and other adventures. Ripley's says it plans to donate 10% of the 2019 season proceeds with a minimum of $100,000 going to first responders. Turning to some education coverage, a new bill filed by a Nixa state rep would allow new teachers to choose whether to participate in the traditional pension system or invest in a 401k style account. However, the proposal is causing many to speak out online. Jared Taylor says the existing pension system is unfair to teachers who leave the public school system for private schools or another profession, but Taylor continues to receive negative comments on his personal Facebook page, mostly from retired teachers. Who say his bill would bankrupt their retirement that they work so hard for? 
Taylor says these comments are attacks on his proposal, while a spokesperson from the Missouri Retired Teachers Association says teachers have every right to speak out. Now, according to the Springfield News Leader, there's conflicting data from several universities that studied similar pension changes in other states on how it affects teachers' retirement. We move now to a story that is positively Ozarks. Springfield Middle School students had to test their knowledge yesterday at the annual Battle of the Books competition. Twelve schools duked it out to see who would take home that prize trophy. Hannah Zettel joins us in studio with the results. Now, I don't know about you two, but when I was in school, we had Battle of the Books. Only it consisted of a teacher repeating a trivia question multiple times and me scrambling to jot down my answer with a pencil. Now the whole competition is digital. Teams submit answers on a laptop. Either way, it proves kids still love to read. Hickory Hills Middle School was all booked up Thursday for the fourth annual Battle of the Books. This is a fantastic day. It makes me very excited that these kids love to read. Six seventh and eighth grade students from all nine Springfield Middle Schools maxed out their library cards to complete 12 books. We have to write a bunch of notes and then we quiz each other. It's fun. Sometimes we get done with what we're doing. It's fun. Yes. <laughs> Students were quizzed on this year's Truman Award nominees, a list ranked by the Missouri Association of School Libraries that represents the best available literature for middle school students. Oh, I really liked Hour of the Beast. That one was really good. So my favorite book was Project 1065 because it has a lot of like historical fiction and I like that genre of World War II. Teammates Jerry and Naya explain it was a team effort full of strategy. Well, every person was assigned two books because we have six people, so we could do all of them. But I read six and did notes on six just in case. And dedication. Every Friday and sometimes Monday, we meet together just to kind of discuss the books that we've been reading and we'll quiz each other. This week we did every day just to yeah, so we can get a little more training in. Hickory librarian Christina Wilkins believes the friendly competition helps kids develop a love for reading that will grow through life. We believe that better readers and writers encourage better citizenship across the board. So the more students love to read and are literate, they will also become better citizens for our city and our state. I mean, it's like sports, but for geeks and nerds. <laughs> I spoke with another librarian who told me this year's books covered almost every genre and dealt with critical issues like mental health, which teaches students early on that it's okay to need help now and then. Congrats to all the teams that participated in this year's battle. Lauren, Joe. Yeah, congratulations. It's like sports, but for geeks and nerds. <laughs> they got like bright futures ahead. I like Those that. Those guys are yeah. smart. Very intelligent. <laughs> Later for you on Daybreak, how much Uber is expected to be valued at once it goes public? Plus, why investors say to keep an eye on Nike stock today. That'll, we'll explain that in your Money Watch coming up. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.